So today I am chatting with Steve Pimsler Sensei, who's a Seventh Don Shihan and member of the United States Aikido Federation Technical Committee. And day to day, he is the president of the board of directors at the New York Aikikai. Good to see you, Sensei. How are you? All right, Jonathan. Thanks a lot. It's good to see you too. Yeah, I I uh, was thinking about you because we had that um, that USAF Zoom call of maybe a couple weeks ago, and you did an awesome job moderating. And I was like, you know what? I'm sure a lot of people want to hear what Steve's up to. So, what's <laughs> going on uh, in your neck of the woods in in, in New York City, New York County well, right now? Yeah, it's um, you know I I don't know that I'm saying anything new to anybody. Uh, if you know the situation. In the city, in New York City, it's uh, um, fairly different than it is in New York State. Um, New York State opened up uh, a lot of businesses and um, restaurants were open. I mean, everything is still uh, under, you know, COVID guidelines. Uh, but the city, of course, which was the epicenter of of New York state's COVID disaster, um, you know, just by, just by the fact of its population, um, is coming under its own set of guidelines. Um, restaurants were just opened up actually a few weeks ago for some indoor dining. Uh, everything has been outside. Um, as far as martial arts and gyms are concerned, uh, gyms were allowed to open also, I think, a, a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago. <laughs> it, the time all blends together, um, but it, it hasn't been that long. And essentially, gyms were allowed to open with, I think, 25, 30% capacity, um, but there were there are no classes allowed no classes that have to do with any kind of physical workouts um now martial arts uh, came under the same heading as boxing which was considered a high risk activity so we are prohibited from opening at all um there is uh you, you could do, there, there is one uh, dojo affiliated with us, um, Ken Yamazaki's Eastside Aikido, which is in Manhattan. Um, and Ken uh, invested a, a huge amount of money in the, um, the HVAC systems that the city is requiring. You, you have to get inspected before you can open. Um, and... Uh, he passed, and then, of course, they told him, you can have one student at a time. Wow. That's, that's the regulations. They can't be a class. Um, and, of course, there can be no contact at this point. So we're basically in that, we're in the middle of that. Um, we're not permitted to open. And, uh, you know, quite frankly, besides the, the guidelines involved, um, we have real concerns. Yamada Sensei has real concerns about the safety of people coming in. Um, we have no alternative to indoor classes. We're in our own building, uh, thankfully, that we own. Um, and... Um, if there were to be classes in there, it would be highly restrictive. Um, obviously still no contact and quite frankly, I don't know how comfortable anybody would be, uh, especially in our situation, uh, starting contact without knowing that there's a, a proven and effective vaccine out. So uh, we're, we're really looking at, um, I think, a long-term situation here uh, before we can really open comfortably. Um, you know, Yamada Sensei, um, 
you know, we have to look out for his health and safety as well. Um, so it's, it's not just the students, but of course, you know, yeah. uh, sensei himself. And, um, you know, he is very adamant about, um, when we resume Aikido, that it be Aikido that gets resumed. Uh, you know, um, we have never been a, a place that does a lot of formal weapons training. Um, and that is not how he wants to resume classes, wants to resume the Aikido that he's done for over 60 years now. Um, so that's, that's, uh, that's kind of where our situation is. We've been extremely, extremely fortunate that the majority of our members have continued to pay their dues since March. Uh, it's an incredible showing of support. Um, you know, we are able to, because we're a not for profit and we're not offering any services where, um, we're allowed to uh, consider those dues as donations. Right. Um, and uh, anybody who, you know, needs a, uh, a letter confirming their donations, you know, we're just, you know, happy to give them out. But that's the situation we're in. Uh, we, as I said, been incredibly lucky that people have continued to contribute, um, that they support us. Um, it's very frustrating for everybody, but uh, I think it, it speaks to um, the club's loyalty to Yamada Sensei and to the place itself. So I, I've just gone on quite a bit here, Jonathan. Sorry. Oh, no, but that's cool. Um, that's, that's our situation. Yeah, that's quite a situation. And I think um, those out there that know you guys really well, like us and the, the entire United States Aikido Federation can empathize that of what you guys are going through and how is how you're handling it and on top of that um you, you know we we'd all agree it could be worse right i mean yes it could be a lot worse so um you know i've been enjoying actually watching uh, yamada sensei's youtube videos which i hear you've you've had a hand in <laughs> and uh i want to go back for a second i don't want to make this all just you know unfortunately the current situation we're now yeah. in october um we're, we're we're all trying to get through it i most of us see light at the end of the tunnel, whether that's a year or two years from now, but it, at some point we'll be back to, uh, you know, normal Aikido and life itself. Um, I want to go back for a second. Um, you're in a unique position that those that have been fortunate to find the USAF and Yamada Sensei, um, you know, get to see him, uh, you know, weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually at big seminars as he travels quite a bit, but you have a unique situation that, for the last, uh, help me out here, 50 years? 50? Almost. Almost. It's about, uh, what is this? 22. It's about uh, 46 years. 46 years you've been by his side at New York Gaiki Kai uh, as, as, as a direct student, but also uh, as a friend. And, and you've, you've got a lot of time with him. Um, how did that happen? How did you find Aikido? Because I don't think I've ever asked you this. How did you find Aikido and how were you fortunate to get connected to New York Gaiki Kai? Well, you know, it's um, really kind of happenstance. Um, I, I was introduced to the, uh, I was introduced to Aikido by name when I was a, uh, I was a theater student in London at the uh, London Academy of Music and Dramatic Art. Right after I graduated college, they had a, uh, they had a program over there f that you had to audition for. It was 12 students who were not UK citizens. And um, it was just a year intensive program. Um, and I was fortunate enough to get in and one of the one of the uh, one of the courses that we studied there was a, a stage combat class, 
And it was taught by a, a great guy named B.H. Barry, who's, I believe, still around. Um, and uh, he did a lot of TV movie work with another guy named Bill Hobbs, and they choreographed fights for tons of uh, stage productions and, and big movies. Um, but anyway, you know, they were, they were much more oriented towards uh, uh, the kind of Errol Flynn swashbuckling mm -hmm. than a typical drama school, which used to do, you know, just fencing. Um, you know, they were, they were into the theatricality of it. And so one of the things that he had us do was, you know, show us how to take falls. And um, one afternoon in a pub, we were out, you know, having a beer. And I said to him, you know, Barry, how did you, how did you figure out how to do these roles? And he said, well, I didn't figure out how to do it. Mm -hmm. I studied a martial art called Aikido. And um, that was really the end of that conversation. When I came back to the States afterwards and was working in theater and trying to supplement my income, uh, in the city by teaching that same kind of class. The theater schools here weren't doing that, um, still doing the old fencing. So um, I was able to get um, work at uh, NYU School of Theater and did a stage combat class there. Um, also rented a space on the Upper West Side and did a private class. And it was going fairly well. And then I thought, you know, I really should do something to improve my skills. So I, I know this is a foreign thing for a lot of people listening, but I picked up a book that they used to call the Yellow Pages. <laughs> and for Manhattan, it was gigantic. Um, looked up Aikido. And the first thing that was listed was the New York Aikikai. So I went down there to watch a class, sat down. I had never seen it before. And the energy in that room and the fun that people look like they were having there, tossing each other around, that was it. That's all I had to see. I signed up on the spot. And within a year's time, I knew that's where I wanted to be. I was still working in theater, um, but that got less and less <laughs> as I was there all day. And, uh, you know, finally, I think in about two, two and a half years there, um, uh, Sensei knew, you know, I had some experience, you know, writing experience and asked me to... Um, kind of host a couple of the demos that they did that he was doing at the time. And, you know, one thing led to another and all of a sudden there I was at the dojo full time. Um, and, you know, just been fortunate to be there ever since. Um, you know, I, I can't, you know, it'd be very difficult for me to go through the list of opportunities and experiences that I was able to uh, to have there because of Sensei, because he involved me in, uh, it, it, at the very beginning of the U.S. Aikido Federation, I think, I think I, he said, oh, you be the treasurer. And, I, you know, I could barely balance a checkbook. But <laughs> there I was thrown into that. Um, Got to meet a lot of people through there. Um, you know, was able to accompany him to, uh, to, I think it was the second International Aikido Federation uh, meeting in Paris. Um, I, you know, all these incredible teachers and Doshu was there and Shirata. I, I, you know, it was an amazing time. Uh, came back. Sensei wanted to do another book. He had done a book a long time ago, uh, published by somebody who was a, an original member of the club, guy named Lyle Stewart, who's since passed on. Um, but um, 
He said, oh, I think, you know, I'd like to do another book. Here's his number. Call him up. Mm. And when I spoke to him, he said, Yamada Sensei, absolutely come in. Um, and, uh, you know, we were fortunate. He said, well, you you write the book. <laughs> and so I was put in charge of, I'd never written a book before. Um, Peter Bernath, who was in graphic arts at the time, uh, he joined us to design the book, put it together. Um, we had, uh, I don't know if you know him, Nobu Arakawa, who used to be in Florida. He was at our, at the New York dojo, uh, was one of the top commercial photographers in the city at that time. He was doing ads for Canon, Nikon. Um, he agreed to do the pictures. Um, another very talented dojo member, Lynn Sonneman, did the illustrations. Um, and we said to Lyle, listen, we'll put the book together for you if you spend the money on the production of it. And he said, deal. And uh, when we finally got it all together, you know, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going off track here. But <laughs> um, when we handed it off to him, he did the first few printings that he did. He did a beautiful job, the, you know, full color cover on it, beautiful paper. And um, listen, I, I don't know wh whether I would have gotten a chance to do anything like that. So there was you know, so much along the way that was in addition to the Aikido there. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm just extremely grateful. You know, my lifelong friends were made there. Um, I met my wife there. She was training. Uh, you know, it's, it's been a, the central core. Um, something I never would have figured in a million years. Wow. So of, did I get off track <laughs> of your question? But, you know, being there all the time, um, you know, the, the, one, the one thing that I, I really, um, I feel I'm lucky is that I never got to take Yamada Sensei's classes for granted. He, he taught all the time. He was there all the time. As you say, most people see him at seminars or, you know, once or twice a year if they're lucky. Um, and we were there all the time with him. Um, but every time he went on, I can tell you, it's like <laughs> it was a seminar. That yeah. electricity that you feel from him and that, excitement and his really his love of getting in front of people and teaching them and and creating this great orchestra piece every time he gets on the mat um he had that every day that's amazing i mean you you definitely uh you could you could we could spend hours on the stories i'm sure and what and what you've developed um i got a few more for you we got, we got to take yeah. a quick commercial break so we'll be right back after these words Imagine there's no illness It isn't hard to do Nothing to stay inside for And no mass media too Imagine all the people living life in peace Ooh. They may say that I'm a dreamer And the world would be a swan we're back chatting with Sensei Steve Pimsler of the New York Aikikai. Fascinating background stories over the years, how he learned Aikido, where he, where he first saw uh, Ukimi, 
and the theater and then some. So uh, tune in, check it out. Uh, so question for you. Um, I wanted to ask you, we started off kind of recapping a little bit about what you guys are going through with COVID and everybody's going through it, their own version. What I want to ask you is in your many years of Aikido training, what's the biggest lesson you've learned uh, either on the mat or off the mat in Aikido that you think is you're, is you're applying every day handling this pandemic? Um, wow, that is a tough one. Um, I mean, I wish I could, uh, <laughs> I wish I could say that I was handling this great. Um, you know, that I had absorbed all the lessons of, of being calm in in the midst of, you know, being attacked and, uh, keeping my center, that would not be honest. Um, this has been a very, uh, it's been a very trying time. Um, you know, as, as everybody, I don't think we're going through anything that anybody else hasn't gone through. Um, you know, I, I am in constant contact almost every day with the Yamada sensei and, um, you know, he's, um, you know, he's kept his strength going. It's a, it's pretty amazing. So sometimes he's still able to calm me down after I speak with him and, you know, knowing his frustration with wanting to get back and the members wanting to get back and trying to figure out a way to uh, balance this and, and, uh, you know, try to keep, people's spirits up um you know maybe maybe that's the thing i certainly learned it from sensei you know to watch him get on the mat when stuff is falling apart around you know not just this but you know incidents happen you know life happens and uh you have crises to deal with and never let it affect him when he got on the mat uh, never, you know, said, well, I don't feel like going out there today. Somebody else teach for me or, you know, um, so I, I suppose if there's, you know, uh, there's something about that attitude of you have a responsibility, um, you take it on. Nobody, nobody put that on me. Um, you know, is to try to uh, be as encouraging and hopeful to people as I can be, even though, you know, um, inside I might be, uh, you know, yeah. crumble. Um, you know, I, I, it's, um, I always find it difficult to, you know, answer a question about how has Aikido seeped into your life? I'm not really, I have to be honest. I'm not, I'm not really sure, um, you know, that I've learned the lessons, you know, sometimes I lose my temper and I go, Oh boy, it was 46 years down the drain. <laughs> um, well, you're human. You're human. We're all yeah, human. And, and we all, yeah. you know, yeah. we are. And, you know, uh, you yeah. said something interesting too. It, it kind of reminded me and you know, uh, I just, one of the things I remember about Yamada sensei every seminar, and I've only been at this 20 years, I, I think I'm at 135 seminars, so I'm just getting started. But every time he teaches, no matter what, he is like a true professional. He's at the mat 40 minutes before class starts. He's dressed out, you know? And we've seen, you know, we've seen some other teachers, we won't mention names, roll up late, throwing their hakam on fast, people are waiting, you know, and to me, it's like, that's the bar. He's the top guy and he sets the example. So that's just always impressed well, me, you know. It, it's, he, you you hit the nail on the head there. I mean, if you think of this in terms of, you know, if it was an opera singer waiting to do their performance, they usually get there an hour early and they're warming up right. and, you know, 
you may not see him, you know, stretching or anything, but sensei's, you know, he is Yamada sensei. He's getting ready mentally for yep. that class, you know, and, um, you know, every, you know, when he gets on there, everything is, you know, very spontaneous, of course, but he gives a lot of thought beforehand and that kind of preparation, you know, uh, you know, we all look at sports celebrities and artists and we say, Oh man, how did they, how did they just go out there and do that? And nobody really great ever just goes out and does it. There's like, you know, hours and yeah. hours of, of practice and, and working at their craft that, you know, yeah. that kind of goes into that. Absolutely. So I think you nailed that. He's, it's, he's, he's a tremendous example that way. Yeah. We say, uh, you know, failing to plan is planning to fail. Right. And he's always yeah. prepared. Um, I want to leave you with, um, this other thought I had about you. I was thinking about this and, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be a student of human nature. I try, I try to watch, I people watch a lot at, at how they act, what they say, how they come across. And one thing that's common with you, and I, I think everybody would agree that I know, and you know, is that you are just, you're like this ambassador uh, of goodwill. And what I mean by that is um, people, like people, I don't think people care or to know how much somebody knows but they're more interested to know how much somebody cares. And I see that when you teach. I see that uh, when you're you know, on a Zoom call. I see that on the mat, off the mat. You just have this very nurturing, caring personality that I think is very uh, attractive to people to want to learn Aikido and to be around you. And, and there's no uh, doubt in my mind that's why you know, you've developed the friendships and the relationships at New York Aikikai that you've developed is that you, you know, we all have our challenges, right? But um, I don't. There's not much ego uh, with you, which is the biggest thing I try to. I fight sometimes is the ego. Um, so I just want to commend you on that because I know we don't spend a whole lot of time together. But the times that we've shared, the times we've talked uh, at winter camp on camera uh, for technical committee series, I just noticed that, and I want to let you know that that it's something that I try to aspire to. Thank you. Thanks, Jonathan. Well, I really appreciate you uh, stopping by today and spending some time. Um, I'm wishing everybody the best. We will be back on the mat one of these days. And um, sure. I'm will. looking forward to it. And thanks again so much. Oh, you're welcome. My pleasure, Jonathan. Anytime.